Welcome to Hear God Every Day. I'm your host, Sarah Witten. Get comfortable, open your heart, and let's talk about how we can be more sensitive to God's voice in our everyday life. So this week, God has put a couple things on my heart to to share with you, to encourage you. Um, I feel like if you're listening right now, the Lord's just really kind of kept putting it on my heart that this is a training tool for leaders, that there um, are a bunch of people listening who are leaders of various different ministries. And so um, this is specifically to encourage you. Um, And that can look so many different ways. Um, it doesn't necessarily look like the the formal type of ministry that we always think of. Um, but be keeping in mind as you're listening today that ministry that God is working through you, um, and it may be several different things, but the the ministry that God is doing through you, um, because this is what He is wanting to speak to. So, um, before we dive in, um, let me just pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place and in this time. We just ask you to search our hearts and to know us. And we thank you, Lord, that you are training us, that you are taking us from glory to glory, that you're not leaving us in the same place. Lord, thank you that the way that you train us, that that process is experience. And um, experience takes time. (laughs) Sometimes we want it to be instant, but um, Lord, that that experience is what brings the internal change, which is what brings the external change. So thank you, Lord, for taking the time to do things with us so that you can do things through us. And in these last couple of weeks of this year, there's just something so um, special about what you are doing in us to kind of tie up the loose strings from this last season and to equip our hearts, equip us internally for what you are preparing us to do externally next year, because what you are doing in us is just as much about the relationship that we have with you and growing that and deepening that as it is about the things that the kingdom is going to accomplish through you moving and working in our lives. So we just surrender that to you. We surrender this time to you. And we ask, Lord, that you speak exactly what you need to to our hearts in these next couple minutes, Lord. Um, And that your will be done. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So there there are several things that um, really popped up when I was praying into what to share today. Um, We've been sharing, God's been very clear uh, about how this time is a time of laying our hearts bare before him, about um, letting him do that deep work inside us as he prepares us for this next year and this next season. And um, this week, actually just this morning, um, you know, I can't even express um, how, how profound really, uh, what he has wanted to, to share has been. So hopefully I can, um, articulate that. Well, the first thing that I felt like the Lord put on my heart is leaders. God is encouraging you to embrace the double edged sword of his word. So about a week ago, um, as I was praying and and having my God time, God brought the word, like literally the the Greek word um, for double-edged, for the double-edged sword, like what that double-edged sword was. I always thought it just meant like really sharp. This is a really sharp sword. God's word is really sharp, and it says it divides even down to to the joints and the marrow and, and, you know, uh, very precise. So I always took that to be very sharp. And that is true. But as we look into that word double-edged, what's beautiful is that it means that it it cuts going in and going out, that it cuts two ways. Um, And what the Lord showed me about that in my own life um, that, you know, I'm sharing with you because of your ministry 
is that that word of the Lord, when we get a word from God and we're hearing from God, there are two edges of that word. And there's the edge that is the encouragement. It is the building up. It is the praise. It is the love. It is the mercy. It is God saying, um, well done. It is God saying, I have big plans for you. It is God saying, I love you, dear child. It is God saying, I made you for this. It is that praise. It is that affirmation from our father, from our daddy God. But then there's that other side, that that second side of the sword. That is that um, I say correction, and I know we hate that word. <laughs> I mean, it's like we've gotten kind of to a place in our society where correction is offensive. Like, you know, if you say anything um, that is slightly corrective, it just gets so offensive. But um, correction in the way of a, a teacher correcting, a teacher training, a coach saying, hey, um, here's the way to do that in, in a slightly different way that is going to get you better results. Um, here's the way, here's how you can, you know, position yourself or tackle this differently that is going to be so much easier and so much more successful for you. It's that kind of coming alongside correction, um, that God brings with his word. And it's this constant process of training and affirming and training and affirming. And he doesn't want to, um, for when we hear his words, he doesn't want us to lean so much into that side of correction that we think that we are just exasperated by it. Like it says that, um, you know, it it instructs actually fathers not to, um, exasperate your children, not to put, um, something on them that is so heavy that they are just crushed with the weight of their failure and the weight of their inadequacy. God is not that kind of father. And so when it comes to his correction and his teaching and his discipline, he teaches us and shapes us in a way that is is also supported by that praise and encouragement. And so there are some people who are listening right now where you have been wanting, it comes from a good place. You've been hungering um, to just do well, to be that good and faithful servant. And so you've been leaning so much into the the correction and the teaching of God that you're feeling like, man, I am so overwhelmed with how far I have to go. I am so overwhelmed by my own shortcomings. And if that's you, the Lord is saying, hey, remember that my word is a double-edged sword and listen for the praise side. Listen for the encouragement side. Listen for the building up side because you need that. You need both edges. And then there's another group that's listening today that, again, comes from a great place. You have this beautiful love story with the Lord and you love um, just kind of leaning in to all of the things that he is saying to your heart that are just, you know, those words of love and those words of comfort and affirmation. And we need those so much. Um, you have a great understanding of his grace and an incredible, um, empathetic heart that is able to love others with his heart, um, with this just uncommon love. Um, but and if this is you, you know, Holy Spirit's confirming it to your heart, but there's, there's some that have been leaning into the one side of the word that is the encouragement, the affirmation, the, you know, um, yes, this is the, this is your destiny. This is what I made you for all of those amazing things, but not hearing God say you're doing great but here's how you can level up. Here's how you can steward that even better. Here's how I'm going to take you from this glory, which is not bad, to this next glory because that requires a deeper level of training because we know training, I mean, think of physical training. Training is never just easy, um, feel good, fun kind of work. It's always harder. You know, when you put that next level of weight on your bar and you go to do the same exercises, it's harder. And it feels like, why am I struggling with the same exercise? 
but it's because you're carrying more, right? You're carrying more weight. You're, you're getting stronger, but then, you know, you do that a couple of times and then it begins to feel easy. So the Lord is constantly training us for excellence, training us for more. And as we are hearing his voice in this season, I just felt that reminder to lean in close and listen for both sides of that word. Listen for the love of the Lord that is just chasing you down and pursuing you and praising you and calling you his child and saying, well done. Um, but also listen to that, that, uh, word from the Lord that is, um, training you up and, and, pointing out areas that, uh, he has a better way and that is constantly, you know, calling you up from glory to glory. So that's the first kind of piece of what I feel like the Lord wants to speak this week is to listen as we're listening and we're hearing God every day, like even make it a challenge this week, each day, listen for both sides of that sword, both sides of that word. Um, because the Lord is really training up and, and calling up people in this time to that next level, but it takes our partnership. It takes our participation and, um, for us to have our spiritual eyes and ears just so open to what he wants to do. Um, growth. <laughs> this is the second piece that he gave me this morning. Growth. This process of growth is a process. And sometimes we are looking to the external of, okay, what am I really good at? Or what is God just making me outstanding in? Which, you know, God does set us apart in, in different ways by just giving us different um, spiritual giftings or wisdom or whatever it may be. But so often we want that to just manifest in its fullness. We want to say, okay, God, if you were uh, calling me to worship, then I, if you were calling me to worship, then I would just have this incredible um, ability to worship. That's just, it turns heads, it's above and beyond. And I would have that. And because I have that external manifestation, I would know, hey, you're calling me to this. Let me begin the inward journey when actually it's kind of the reverse, like the Lord speaks to what is not yet. Um, like I, I love the Beveres, they're amazing authors and speakers. And I love how John Bevere just so candidly shares that at the beginning of the time that the Lord was calling him, he was not in the natural, a talented writer. He was not, I mean, his first speaking message, he says, was a total flop. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, the second time he went to do it, it was just amazing. It was like the Lord took him on this process of growing this gift in him. And um, the thing we don't like about growth is we have to be bad at it first. <laughs> I mean, maybe not bad at it, but you know, it doesn't have that full manifestation of where the Lord is taking us at the beginning. And, um, I love how the word encourages us to practice our faith and, um, it, it encourages us to make our progress evident to all and progress implies that we are going from a lesser level to a greater level. And, you know, progress, like it's a great word. We love growth. We love progress, but we don't love starting the growth and the progress because by definition, it means that that starting place has to be not as great, not as finished as you know, the end product and thank God for that. Thank God that he takes us in this journey of increase. Um, but I feel like the Lord is wanting to encourage some leaders out there today that God has really called you to that area, to that thing. And you're looking at the outward manifestation right now and maybe comparing a little bit and saying like, hmm, well, if God was calling me to that place, I would have that talent or I would have that, um, the, the fullness that I'm believing for and that I'm seeing. And I don't. So for those people who are feeling that way, the Lord is encouraging you to look at 
that word and to believe because of his ability to grow things. Not based on what you possess or have to work with, but based on your ability to grow in those things, maybe in ways that you can't even see right now. Um, The third part that the Lord gave me this morning that, you know, it seems a little bit uh, like it doesn't fit as well with the first two pieces, but I really feel strongly that the Lord wanted me to share this all together. So, um, you know, this is going to make sense to somebody out there. But I, I was listening um, to this this Christian song uh, in the car, and these these lines stood out to me. It said, um, "It ain't, it isn't too high to touch, it isn't too far to fall." And they were talking about leaps of faith that it's not too high to touch, it's not too far to fall. And what the Lord highlighted to me about that is so often we look at. Um, what is happening in our life and kind of the story that our life is, is telling and becoming. And we see these big leaps of faith, or we see these, you know, risks that the Lord's calling us to, or, um, you know, even sacrifices sometimes. And they feel so big and scary. But when we zoom out, We see that the entire story, everything that the Lord has called you to, everything the Lord is doing through you, everything the Lord will do through you, that it is all about relationship with him, right? That is all that is ever happening is your relationship with the Lord and everything else flows from that. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. All the circumstantial things, all the needs, all of the, um, to do's, everything will be added to you when you just seek the Lord first. And so as you're zooming out from either that leap of faith, that sacrifice, whatever the Lord is calling you to, you know, in this season and in the next, as he kind of, you know, is is launching us into what's next for each of us. um, I just feel like the Lord says, when you zoom out and you look at that leap of faith, it's not too high to touch because really the wildest dream that you could possibly imagine of doing with the Lord. You know, maybe it's like you have this dream to see this nation saved, whatever this crazy, wild, huge, bigger than you dream is that the Lord has given you that when you zoom out and just see it as you continuing to walk in a ever deepening closeness with the Lord, it's not out of reach. And it's not even that far off from where you are, that that all stems from that relationship. Similarly, when you're looking at leaps of faith, um, like in the scary stuff, like, Ooh, God's calling me to leave this comfort zone and take this leap of faith. Um, and we look at as humans, we look at how far we can fall. Like off God doesn't come through. This is how far I can fall. My question is, if you were to fall that far, if you were to take that leap, you know, sell it all and start that business that you feel like the Lord's calling you to. If you were to take that leap and you quote unquote fell, or it didn't turn out the way that you expected it to turn out relationship wise with the Lord, would you still have the Lord's love? Yes. Would you still be in a relationship with him that is secure? Yes. Would you still have a a Lord who promises you nothing but good things? Yes. Would you still have um, all of the promises of God and your, your destiny secure in his hands? Yes. And so that relationship, that thing that matters, that everything stems from, would still completely be intact. So actually these leaps of faith are kind of like an obstacle, uh, optical illusion that can become an obstacle for us where we see them as, you know, these make or break moments in our circumstances, but really they are so much more about our relationship. So as we focus on just growing that intimacy and growing that relationship with the Lord, um, those dreams suddenly don't seem so far. And those risks or those falls suddenly don't seem so far. And we're able to just kind of walk in this 
ever increasing relationship with the Lord without that fear that holds us back from taking those leaps or from reaching or dreaming big. And so those are just the three things that the Lord put on my heart to um, encourage you with this week as you kind of um, take a, a step back and a step deeper into intimacy with him in this just season of preparation. Um, I just feel this great expectancy and great anticipation in the spirit. And so um, I'm very encouraged by it. And I pray that you are too, regardless of what circumstances you're seeing on the outside. Um, So that's all I have for you today. Uh, A few just quick resources. Um, If you were not able to make uh, last weekend's services, I had mentioned I was uh, able to speak. It was a, an amazing opportunity, and um, I feel like the Lord uh, really just showed up. Thank God, because <laughs> I didn't have anything. So um, if you want to see that message, I'm going to be putting it up uh, on the website at arrowsofzion.com. Um, also, if you are looking for Christmas gifts um, on the bookstore page at arrowsofzion.com, um, I have several just different options that are not my things. They are um, people that I know, and uh, they are either very kingdom-minded or just great opportunities to uh, draw people closer to the Lord or, um, you know, fund something that is um, very kingdom-centered. So um, take a look at those and check those out. Um, also on the website, I do have, um, uncommon vessels, which is the book, the, the book that God did the impossible with. And that was published, uh, this March. I literally, it, the author copies came in the day we brought our baby home. So it was, it was my twin, um, birth this spring. Um, and so that's available there, but also, um, anywhere books are sold, you can get it too. Um, if you want to connect, please uh, send me an email, send me a text. The way to do that is at arrowsofzion.com as well. Um, and yeah, I would love to hear from you. I am so encouraged by the testimonies of just what God is doing in your life. Um, so we will con- kind of continue on this journey next week. We'll see what the Lord has for us as we just grow closer to him and learn together how to hear him better every day. Thanks for spending time with me today. If God spoke to you through this time, visit arrowsofzion.com for writings, resources, and ways to partner with me in reaching the unreached with the gospel. You can also find Arrows of Zion on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Have a blessed day, and let's meet here next week.